Hello, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Felix from IDE, and I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to our STATA training, STATA 101 for STATA beginners. And today's training actually focuses on we getting ourselves familiarized with the software or getting ourselves moved to the software. And we do that by taking a tour through the program just for us to know the various functionalities and what actually the software has to offer to us in our quest to use it for, for, for our research work for our student thesis. And so we do that by first of all looking at the various Windows Stata actually uses to interact with its users so that our use of the program will be very easy for us. And to do that, uh, let's first of all take a look at the first window, which is on my left hand side here. It is called the review window, the review window. And what this window actually does is that it keeps record or track of all the commands that you actually issue to the software to perform an activity for you. And so when you use a command to instruct the software to perform an activity for you, what the software does is that it also keeps record of that particular command so that in case you want to go back and use a command you have previously used, you can just go there, highlight it, and then to appear at, I mean, on this particular screen or this particular window, and then you just uh, hit enter on your, on your keyboard, and then the same activity that it, it, it actually performed for you previously will be repeated once again. Because in the mind of, this, of Stata or of the program, uh, it, it understands that you want, him, you want it to repeat what it did for you uh, previously. So that is what this particular window window uh, window uh, does. Let me, let me just quickly demonstrate one or two things for you or to you for you to actually know how it works and how you can actually interact with that particular window in your quest for recalling a command you have previously used. So for instance, I want to check the version of my of my of my, of my software package. You know, Stata has various versions. The latest one is the 15. Now, if I want to check the version, even though it is written here, but I can use the command actually to check it. So if I want to check it, I issue the command version. Sorry, version. And then just hit enter. You will see that this is the command I have previously. I just I, I just initiated. And Stata gave me a response telling me that the version I have is 14.1. And so Stata has kept this 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 uh, command as a record. In case I want to use it, I just have to come here and then highlight it. It appears here, and then I hit it again, and then and then uh, the same activity is performed for me. Again, let me try and call in a data and using that command, and let's see if the command will be kept as a record over there. I mean, in the review window. So here, I call a command. So I call a data set uh, that is sys use using the command sys use. Uh, let me call a data already installed in the package for auto. So you see that it keeps, it has recorded the command sysuse auto. So later on, if I want to use it again, I can go there and call it back just as I did for the version. And you will see that the result has come here. And the, actually, the, the feedback state I decided to give me a a little detail about about the, the the data I actually instructed it to call or to bring in. So that is how, or that is yeah, that is how this window actually works. Assuming I make a mistake by typing something like T or TL, something like that, you see, I will later explain to you when you commit an error. All these colors you understand, but you will see that source data keeps record. So it doesn't keep record of only. Uh, the commands that you initiate rightly, but it also keep a record of all the command that you wrongly initiated. Uh, for instance, this data is telling me over here that this command, I don't know about this command. And so later, the fact that it doesn't know that the command is, is actually wrong, sometimes it implies that I don't have that package, that user written command in, in, in my current version. And so there is a way I can actually instruct Stata to go and bring it in or to actually get it for me. We'll do that later. So that is the, the, the purpose for this particular window, the review window, or uh, people call it, the, I mean, yeah, the review window. I just call it the command window. Now let's come down here. You realize that I was using down here, and I guess that gives you an idea of uh, 
how or what this window does as the name stipulates it's called the command window uh, i personally call it the, the I personally call it the instructive window because that is where I actually instruct the software to perform an activity for me. Uh, sometimes I also refer to it as, as the request window if I want to be polite with the software but by, by not using the, the harsh word or the strong word command. I, I, I normally refer to it as, as, the, as the request window. So over here, the, the uh, what it actually does is that it receives instruction from the user and communicates it to the software program. Then the software will give us the feedback if it is correct or if, it, if the instruction is rightly, you know, communicated to the to the program. It will give us the response that we need. If it is not rightly communicated, it will give us red. Just as I, I mean, we saw or we are seeing this latest command the current command that I just initiated. So this, uh, this particular window, what it does is that it receives instruction or command. Uh, it receives instructions or commands from the, the user to you know, and communicate it to the software or the, 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 the program. Then the program will actually decode that instruction and then give us a feedback that we desire. So, so just as I said, I normally call it the instructive window or the, the request window or some kind of communication window, anyhow you want to call it. But the actual name uh, for this window is called the command window. Now, when you come here, just as you are seeing on the screen or the few demonstrations that I've done, you can also see, at least you can have an idea of what this window actually does, you know, as I mean, for, for the user. So this is, we call it the result or the output window. It is called result or the output window because whenever you I mean whenever you initiate a command or you, or you issue an instruction to the software program, after the software has communicated your sorry has decoded your your instruction and then prepared to give you the response, it also communicates back to you the response via this window. And so that is why it is called the output window or the or the result window. So you you can see that I initiated or I issued a command called sysuse, meaning that uh, system use. Sysuse means, means system use. And whenever you want to call a data, data has in its memory or is stored by the by the program or by the writer of this program, uh, you use the system use or the sysuse uh, command. And then this is the data, the kind of data that I require. Now, when I initiated that, it gave me some feedback again if you look at version when i when when, when i instructed the, the software program to actually tell me uh, the, the the sort of version you know I, I have on my computer it communicated or it gave me a feedback via this window by telling me that oh you have version 14.1 congratulations others have version 8 and they are now graduating to 14 so you you are the congratulation so just on a lighter note that is what this this particular uh, window does it is called the results or the output window just to take you back a little bit, just to refresh your mind remember i said this is the review window it keeps record of all the commands that you issue to the software so that in case you want to go back and repeat an activity, you just look for it over here and then select it. Sometimes the user might have several commands, like myself. I do a lot of data work and I don't normally shut down my, my program. And so I may have, you know, it will go down, 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 down. And so scrolling through to pick the exact command might be very difficult for me. I can just type it here and then and just like for instance, if I want to move the version, assuming I have all this place packed up with several commands, rightly issued and wrongly issued, and therefore it will be difficult for me to scroll through and then pick the one I just want to repeat. I just have to you know, filter it here. So this is also a filter. It's a sub window of this particular review window. It's called filter window so or search window. So I can just type version and then all commands on the, yeah, in this case, the command version have to be used several times, so it brings all of them here, and then I pick it, and then I, I go ahead and use. Let me use the command that will have been used once. For example, uh, 
clear or you can see that has come out and then you just select and remember i said when you select it appears down here and then you just press enter so that is just by the way just to take you back a little for you to have you know, understanding of the window better then from here from there we came here remember i said this is called a command window that is the right name but um, on a lighter note, I normally call it instructive window or the request window or the communicating window or whatever you choose to call it. But the actual name is command window. And I said it is the window uh, where you actually instruct the software or request the software or command the software to actually perform an activity. And so what it does is that it receives the instruction from the user and then communicate it to the program. And then the program will decode that command or instruction or request or communication and then uh, interpret it and after it has been understood then it gives you the feedback that you desire and so just as I don't want to clear my data set because I'll be using it so let me use say with version again you see that when I press it it's you know, now it works so the software has taken the, the, the message has decoded it has given me the feedback that I desire so it is called a command then Remember, I just said here that this is also the output window, the result window. So that is in, like it's like you are talking to your your brother at home. When you speak, you expect to hear from him as well. So the feedback, you know, when the, the, the the information that you receive from your brother after you have spoken you know, to him is what is called the feedback. So this software doesn't talk, but what what it I mean what it does is that it presents to you the feedback. On a screen and the screen that it presents the feedback on is for the output or the result window now let's come to my right hand side my right hand side my right hand side here you will see it is called the variables window variables window variables window because if you should, I mean now we have data set in the memory of the of the program and so once we have data set in the memory of the program you, you see that we have we have the the details of the not too much of the detail but at least you have the name and then the description what we normally call label later we shall learn some jargons in, in, in stata so that you understand some of these terms whenever a colleague who also uses data communicates to you using some of these terms so so here it is you know divided into three technically um the first one here, you know, when when I you know, go the the cursor around here, you will see there's some small arrow points here. So the arrow here is telling me that if I want to, if I'm interested, you know, in using the variable called make, I can just click it and then it will come to my command window. So we use instead I will use command together with variable names to communicate with the program because the variable names technically is the data I mean, that is what contains the data and so um, you, whenever you use them uh, whenever you are initiating a command definitely most of times you'll be you'll be using variable names in addition to commands to communicate to the program especially when you are doing statistical analysis definitely as we want to find the average price like we have price over there we'll do it later you you, you use the command that actually computes or calculates averages and then you add up the variable price in the to it and then it actually does it. So that is what the, the small arrow does. For example, if I need price, I can also click here. If I want the MPG, I can click it. So as soon as I put it by a variable, the arrow appears. And if I'm interested in calling that particular variable, I just click on the arrow and it will appear in command so that is what the arrow does now this one just as the the heading actually stipulates you will see that we have the name here so it tells you the name of the variable the names of the variables that you have in the data set so so that is what it does so this this, this second sub window under the variable windows actually presents the names of the variables you have so assuming uh, i have a variable for x for example you see that x appears here so i have just created a variable for x and it appears here. and again if i am interested in it i can just call it back now 
I don't I'm not interested in it, so I can just roll with that. Now, so you, you see, you always have some information here, only when you have data set in, in the program. Now, um, this side, this third column actually also presents some a brief description of the of each of the variables. We normally call them labels, the labels of the variable. So you can see that the variable name is called make, then it is talking, I mean the brief description about the variable make is make and model. This this data is actually about vehicles, so make and model, that, that is what it's present. Then price, it gives you the description as price. Then the MTG, you know, most of the times the variable need you don't actually communicate enough to us. And so the, the essence of we having this label is to give us a brief description for us to understand what each variable actually stands for. And that is why you see. So the MPG here is actually talking about the mileage, the mileage of the vehicle. That's it. You see in the, in the, in the, in the data set. So that, for example, rep 2, I mean rep 78, you also see repair record 1978. Headroom is for headroom trunk. We are talking of trunk space, even with the measuring unit and all that. So, it, so the label that window gives you, you know, a label of the variable or a brief description of the variable. It helps you understand that, that briefly or quickly each each variable that you have in the data set. So, like I said, you only see or have some information here only when you have data set in the in the in the program. So, assuming I clear all my data set or I clear the data set you see that you don't have any information there it's not redundant or vacant and therefore there's no information but as soon as I get I call in a data you will see that the, the, there will be some information appearing there so calling back the data you see that the information has actually appeared back now um, again over here you th there comes a time as a researcher or a student you have very large data data set and with several variables reaching I mean getting into thousands from hundreds to thousands and if you are looking for a variable must you be scrolling through the entire data set just to look for that variable no once just as I showed you at the uh, review window same thing here once you know the name of the variable you can just type it so for instance assuming I have a lot of data set and I'm looking for the variable trunk I just uh, type trunk or the, the first few letters of the, of the, of the variable and all the variables with you know, similar first few letters will appear and I choose the one that I want. But this one I just type it for me so it's, it just presented to me exactly the way I want it. So that is the, that is the essence of this particular uh, search we do here. It's also a subset of, of the variables we do. But the actual we do, the name, for, for this entire window is called the variables window. It presents you the name of the variable, the label, which is the, the brief description of the variable, just for you to understand each variable that you have in the data set. And then, like I said, this, uh, this arrow actually tells you, uh, actually notifies you that if you want to call the variable, just click on it and then it will appear there. Ladies and gentlemen, let's move to the the, the next window, it is called the properties window, properties window. So over here, it's also subdivided you know, into two. And what each and every one of them does to give you a detailed, quick information about all the variables and the data set that you have in your program. And so if you look at the variables, for instance, let me select a variable for you. And you will see that every information about variable foreign is here. So you can see the name foreign, the label, just as you see here, car type. You see that it's also seen, it's also appearing a car type. And then the type is about the, the, the way the variable has actually been measured, the type, and then the format as well. Later we shall go through these ones today. That is not the purpose for our discussion. So I would like to need to jump. Now the value label. Value label. So remember, we have label and value label. Uh, label gives you a quick description. The value label, we shall later talk about how to manage data. It's about actually if the data has codes. Uh, if you look at foreign, for instance, foreign is, is, is a variable that is, is a categorical variable, a special form of categorical variable, normally known as dummy. And so uh, the 
the, the, the value label assigned to it is called origin. And under the origin, the software has been told that if it is zero, it means it is domestic. If it is one, it means it is a foreign. It means that the car was manufactured in, in a foreign country. And so that is what the value label actually does. And then you can also assign a quick note you know, to a variable. So assuming a note has been assigned to, uh, for example, maybe during the data collection, something happened and then that variable maybe there is some special information that the data manager or the analyst has to know uh, in the course of actually cleaning the data um, a note can be attached to the variable for it that uh, brother or sister when you are dealing with this variable understand that this is the situation so that uh, you can actually uh, get to know how you can go by or use that particular variable so you can assign a note to, to a variable and then when you come here the, the next sub window is what we call the data so the entire data set Stata also keeps a, a brief description of the entire data set about it there are commands also to actually investigate about you know, query the system to give information about the data set but the the, the, the latest versions of, of the program have been designed in such a way that you can just come here and have all the information you want to have about the data set. So just as uh, uh, I explained under the variable, if you look at the file name, the file name we have here is auto. The data name is called auto. Remember I use sys use auto, system use auto, and I said the name of the data set is called auto. And data set are equally files, just as we know. And so, and so you will see that the data set is called auto, and that is what it is being described as the file name auto. And then the extension DTA here means that anytime you see DTA, it means that the data is stored or uh, saved in stata formats. So that is what it means. Then the label, just as we have label which gives a quick description of variables, we also have labels that gives quick description about the entire data set. So it is telling us that this data is about 1978 automobile uh, industry. So talking about various vehicles, uh, where they were manufactured, price and other specifications that are needed uh, by buyers whenever they want to actually purchase a vehicle. So that is the label. Then remember I said you can also assign a note to a variable similar uh, a similar thing can also be done here by assigning a note to the to the data. So just for instance, if you are sending the data or sharing the data with, with a research team member uh, and you want him to actually have an understanding of something uh, specific about the data set, you can actually uh, insert it here later we shall, we shall learn how to do that. So you can assign a note to the to the data, data set. Then it is telling you the number of variables that we have in the data set 12. If you like, let us count. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So exactly you know what we see over here. Uh, 12 variables. 12 variables. And then we also have in terms of observation, let's let's as just as we know the sample size or the sample, we have 74. So 74. And you can query it quickly by telling Stata that count them for me. And then Stata will just tell you 74. Later we shall open the you know the, the data spreadsheet for us to actually have a feel of how the variables are presented in the system. So it is telling us 74. Then just like any file you know saved on a on a computer computer system it actually takes some sort of a, you know some portion of the hard drive and so it is telling you that the size of the of the data file is actually 3.11 3 kilobytes so that is what we see over there and then um, the memory you know computers also work with memory so the system takes you know the data set actually takes about 70 so about 64 I beg your pardon about 64 you know, megabytes kind of so that is what is there so and then in terms of sorting you can later we shall deal with all these things uh, sorting you can sort a data by arranging them according to a particular variable 
And so here it is telling you that the data set is sorted by foreign. Later, when we go into the spreadsheet that presents the data in detail, you will see uh, or you understand uh, what I'm talking about. So this is basically these are the these are the windows that Stata actually uses to interact, you know, communicate with its users. And so I believe it has set a right purpose you know, for you. Now let's quickly run through some few buttons. And ladies and gentlemen, I beg your pardon. I'm using Mac. In Windows, this this the way it's presented here vary a bit, but it's the same thing. It's just that it's the presentation. So just to just to draw your attention. So let's quickly go through some of the buttons here. So over here, if I want to close it, I click here. If I want to uh, minimize it, I click it. Just as in Windows, and then if I want to restore the size you know, of the way that the software is, or the program is spread on my screen, I want to restore it to the normal size, I, I choose here. In Windows, you see all those buttons at your right hand side, right hand top, you know. So, so, so that is that is what those three buttons stand for. Over here, so here is like if you want to shut the whole software down, that is what you, you use. And you click there, or better still, so you can type a command here and the data will exit. So, I mean, if you want to exit, that is where you go. It's about minimizing, it's about restoring the size. I mean, restoring the uh, calling by the original size. Again, when we come here, like as we know in every software package, you can open. So you, this is this is about open. As only well, I have data saved somewhere here, or I want to locate a data set. It's just like opening a file via any Microsoft uh, program, and then you can also save, and then you can also print. Let's say you have some results here and you want to print. If your system is connected to a printer, you can print. Uh, so that is what uh, this this aspect also does, or this button does. When you come here, we have something called log file. You know, Stata does it uh, you, for you to save your result. There are several ways of saving your outputs. Apart from the fact that they appear here, you can also save them in a separate file that you can actually visit and then use them. You can save them in, uh, in Microsoft Word or Excel. What we call the text or the Excel file, you can also save. There are several ways of saving them, but just to mention a few, you can even send them to PDF if you want to PDF file and all that. But Stata has an inbuilt, you know, uh, platform where you can also save your your output, and that is the the log file. Today we are not going to spend much time about it, but just to let you understand. So that is what uh, this button also does. And in terms of viewer, I'm not gonna talk much about it, but I will later come back and then demonstrate to you what this particular button does. Graphs, as you see, it's here. This is a very important, you know, part of Stata, very, very important. And those advanced, intermediate or advanced users of data normally use here a lot because uh, you write a code or a program, others call it a script, those of us who normally use data, we say you write a file. So you, you can write a whole script that actually instructs the system to conduct a particular a specific data management activity or construct certain results for you and all that. And the essence of, so this is do file. If I click, it's a do file. So you, you, you type in my subsequent videos, I will show you samples of do files that I've written for some works that I've done. And then you get to understand or appreciate how this this particular aspect of Stata works. So that is what programmers and uh, users, you know, I mean, the, from intermediate to advanced level users of Stata, including programmers and all that, that is where they use it a lot. You can use it to write you new know, file, new file, and all of that. So it's very very important as we go through this particular course. We'll be using them. We'll be using it along the way to to actually write our uh, so so it's 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 about the one of the benefits of using the do file is that it it keeps record it's like a note of what you've done so that when if you are to repeat it you won't lose track of what how you perform that particular activity or whatever the way you want an activity to be performed you write all of them in script or in code in this particular area and then you can close it anytime you open it and click uh, run or execute it does 
whatever. It will, it, it will repeatedly you know, do everything that uh, uh, you, you've done previously. So that is that is the doofa. And then this is the data editor. So like you remember, I spoke, I, I told you that we shall open the the spreadsheet that actually present the details of the data set in the, in the program. So this is the this is the data editor. If, if I click it, you will see that the data set that we have in the memory of the program actually appears here, and you will see that foreign is here. Uh, and all other variables are also here the way they must appear. Later, we will come back here and then use it to do some sort of basic analysis and I will explain to you in detail uh, how each variable or why each variable is presented the way we see I mean, we see here. So that is the... That, and over here too, there are other buttons. Uh, we have the filter. You can, you can filter your data out. We have the variables if you want to manage your variables we have also we also have the property you can even take a snapshot of the whole you know sheet and then assuming you want to send it to a colleague who is sitting somewhere I want to know how the data actually appears you can take a snapshot of it so that is that is uh, these are the buttons that are present and um, I'm going back to the main screen and it will take me here but let, before I do that, let me explain to you the difference between this and that. The two of them are almost the same, but there's a slight difference. You can see the software asking me a question. I'll come back to that. So this is data editor window or the spreadsheet that actually presents the data in the memory of the program to us, for us to see in detail how each variable appears in the memory of the program. And so you can see that this is data editor edit. Edit means that you can actually manipulate the data. If I say manipulate, cook, but you can actually edit the data set. So you see, I deleted something there, and the system is asking me uh, if I'm going to, is it supposed to apply the changes I've done? I say cancel, so I, it comes back. So you can actually uh, remove and add or correct something manually over here with the data editor edit. But when we come to the data editor browse, I'll go back to the main uh, screen and then I will call it back. Now I'm in that zone. It present the, the, the it, it present the data set as, just as the edit the editor or the edit does. But here you cannot edit the data set. There's nothing. It's just for you to just have a look at it. It's just for you to browse the the, the, the actually the data set in the memory of the program. So that is the difference. So just as I call for the data editor edit from the main screen, I'm going back to the main screen and call for the browse and it will appear here. Some versions you will not see the two of them here. This is version 14 and upward. I'm, I'm sure 12 upward has this I mean present them this way. So that is the difference between these two. So now that I want to go back to the edit, you see it's, I mean you see the software asking me, you are about to change from browse mode to edit mode. Are you sure that is what you want to edit? Are you sure that you want to change to edit mode? Then I say change to edit mode. If I don't want it, I will say cancel. So let me close it. So that same browser is here, the data edit browser. So, so it's here, it still takes me back just as we saw it. And even if you point the cursor on it, it gives you detail, data editor, browse. And this is data editor, edit. So that is the difference. Over here, you can edit the data, you can make changes. Over here, you can touch it. You can, you, you can only have a look at the data and it's content. Now, sometimes, depend on the size of our screen, Stata, if we are doing serious or rigorous analysis, doesn't present the whole result to us. It presents bit by bit. And so after viewing the first page, let me call it page, after viewing the first page, if you want to go to the next page, you can either hit enter or you use this particular command more and then it will take you there just, just like that. So that is what this, this, this button also does. And then over here is break. Assuming I have instructed Stata to do to perform an activity and it is it is in the process of performing it if in a very uh, rigorous or serious analysis you see that sometimes you issue a command and the result doesn't come at once speedily sometimes stata has to 
do a lot of computation and processing before you give the feedback. So in the course of doing that, I want to pause it, or I want to stop it, or terminate that particular action that it is performing, because I feel like maybe there is something I should have added to the instruction, or I have wrongly requested it to do something wrongly for me, and so I have to make a correction before I can ask it to go ahead and do it. Then you click break, and then Stata will just terminate the activity that it is performing immediately for you to perform whatever action you want to perform before you can re-instruct it again to to continue doing it okay or to do to, to start over again and perform that activity for you so that is that, that is the rule for these two uh, buttons again you can also search over here this is not for you to search for data for a variable but searching you know generally uh, as far as the software is, is concerned and since we don't know what's in the section that's uh, we don't have to so here is about health if you want to search for health you can you can issue a command here you can also issue a command here to say tablet something like that and then it will bring the the help you know all the information that uh, that command you are looking for information for information about will be brought here so if you are in, in, looking for this you just type it in, just click it and then it will take you to the, the, the window scene of uh, that actually gives you much information about that, that uh, option otherwise you can come and instruct and say help tablet we'll come back to all these things and it's very interesting we we'll all appreciate it <clears throat> so i beg your pardon so that is what uh, this particular section also does um i don't know it's a long time i used window machine i don't know whether in windows the window versions also has you know uh, the window versions also have these i mean this this, this particular option on top here otherwise it should be somewhere in your machine then um when we come to the top here the stata has more to offer so if i come to file most of these things that we saw here will be seen over here so far we have new if you want to open a new file or start a new project we'll come back there later if you want to open uh, and already install data file or do file or log file anything we will just come here and then recently i've been performing a lot of data activities so it keeps record sorry keeps record of all these you know activities or stata files that have been opened in the past few days all of them here so i don't need to if i want to call them any of them back i just come here and call it back that's it again i can clear i can clear this particular menu if i don't want to see any of them here then when we come here we have open recent do do files so if it's a do file that you also want to open recent ones um, you can also come here otherwise you can clear all of them then you can close the entire you know system or package if you are done with what you want to do and i will show you a command for doing that as well it's just like coming here then we have save just like the saving in the, you can view remember i said we'll deal with this view stuff later on do file is here if you want to file name is also here change working directory you may be working in one folder and you want to switch to another folder you can so this actually menu is good for those who use data interactively i mean point and click they use the, the marker to actually do the point and click then we have the log file remember i said it's here in this one for saving your results or your output is also there and then we have import you can Sometimes data set is uh, received in Excel or SPSS or any other, any of these you know formats, SAS, SCA, OB, OTBC, data source, XML, data, all of them. You can just import them <coughs> to Stata straightforward. Then we have um, exports. So from Stata to another domain, you can also export your data set. Then remember, I told you that there are data sets actually saved in the package that all of us have that we can use for demonstration or practice and so if you want to manually uh, come and open them you just go to file and then click here and it will give you stata 14 manual data set if you click here you see some data sets you know, presented here for various you know activities that you want to learn 
if you come here data example data set you store with data it's also here you can come remember the auto we are using is here you see this here so that is how or that is what this this particular very aspect of this data also does again remember i told you about printing you can also print your results and then with the data that i just demonstrated to you you can issue a command uh, sys dial and then you enter so i beg your pardon it is a sys use dial and then you get all the phone i beg your pardon this one we will later talk about it it's not what we i meant to say this i meant to type this so you see the the data we just saw over there we are seeing the same thing over here the data set we can we saw over there we are seeing the same thing over here so that is what that does when you come here you have just like edit you have copy paste and all that take your time and then go through and it's just the same as what you see in other software programs <coughs> I beg your pardon. Now, when you come here, view, like I said, we shall later come back here. Data, all data management activities can also be done here. We'll later use some of them. And then graphs that we draw, we plot. <clears throat> and then when you come to statistics, you will see that uh, all the, <clears throat> sorry, all the statistical activities the software can perform, you can do them here. We'll be doing analysis, so come here. And the user, so the things that you've been using and all that will also be kept here and then we have window so uh, various ways if you want to eliminate any of these windows if you want to eliminate any of these windows or bring it back you just come here and then manage it and then help ladies and gentlemen one thing i like about stata is that you don't have to go searching for its manual its manual is actually kept here and so if you open you will see a PDF file containing a whole book, which is a whole book on Stata, the software that you are having. So you can learn it on your own. And the, the portion here is what I showed you over here. So that is the quick talk <coughs> about the program. I, I would like to thank you for having time to take a tour with me. In my next video, I will begin to do basic statistical analysis with you. Even before, then we'll be doing some few commands that seek to query some few information about the data set that we have. And then we'll move on to do some basic statistical analysis for the software. Thank you so much. I would like to remind you that <coughs> continue following my, my YouTube page and then all my social and my, and media pages. And then follow the videos and try to practice them. I've shown you how you can get a sample data.